Mr. Vincent. Hello. Um, I was just wondering when our first assignment was going to be. No, our oh, first assignment is in midterm. Midterm? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank that's you. It, that's the first exam. You only have two exams in this class. Midterm yeah. and oh, final. Okay. Yeah. Will yeah. we be able to use our notes? For the, for the midterm? For the final? Like for the, when you're doing a midterm? Yeah. Sure. It's a, the midterm will be a take-home and the final is a take-home. Okay. Thank the you. Midterm, for the, remember, remember what you said. For the midterm, it is based on the terms and the chapter. So uh, my goal, like today, today I'm wrapping up. Uh, I'm wrapping up. I'm revising these three, what we did so far. Um, I have a 24 points in there for you all. So I'm coming back to revise to show you all comparisons. And so the midterm will be based on the terms. I, I want the, my goal is to get to chapter, which is um, damn Greece. my turn. So once we get to Greece, you'll have it's about, been one minute and he already talking. You'll have you'll have terms. Uh, I'll begin in the next four minutes. So we revise these areas. I don't care. It's interesting. It's fun. Cars, I need to tell you probably going to get slaughtered for this video. But I don't I care. That was it's class, but Cars, I, don't I need to tell you about a lot of people that I have. Anyway, because the video got private, but I'll tell you what she said. Well, basically, she had a talk with her teacher tonight. Yeah, but my mic is on. This is because. Oh, shit. It was misleading. Oh, shit. <laughs> So let's begin. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, welcome to 
this is the edition of this course or this class. Um, I'm going to do some revision with you all here. We, we completed ancient India, then so I will go back to showing you how to, how to compare. Uh, um, pay attention to this date. This is the midterm exam week, March 25th to the 26th. So our exam, which is a, um, a Thursday, will be 25th. And I will give you the midterm exam the week, the week before. So the week before the 25th, I'll give you that midterm exam to turn in on the 25th. Is that clear? And the midterm exam will be based on terms of each chapter, wherever we have reached for the midterm. So far, we have covered chapter one, chapter two. Next week, we're going to China. No, chapter two and three. Next week is chapter four. So at the end of the month, we should wrap up chapter China. So my goal is for, my goal for the midterm is to get to chapter three, is to get to, <clears throat> sorry, to chapter five before the midterm. And so we will try to do five chapters. So what I will do probably, I'll, you will have three terms of each chapter that will give you 15 terms to define, which you'll type up, put a couple of page, do your research and document it for me, and, and then you'll email it back to me on the 25th, right? We will we'll talk about that. So this is this is this is the this is the first of your assignment, and the second assignment will be the final exam. It will be the same thing. If this class was an in class, I would give you more work, but we are not. I'm not. I'm not going to load you up because I know you have other classes <coughs> online, and online classes are very difficult at times. All right, so this afternoon, we're going to do some revision. By the way, I'm going to open up the floor <clears throat> to the students, and you will tell me, so we'll take it one step at a time. Ancient Mesopotamia, and give, <clears throat> give me some, let's look at, Geography slash names. Who wants to go first? <clears throat> Let us open up to this new one. We are revising. What you don't know, I will fill in the blanks. So who wants to go Huh? Land between two rivers. All right. So tell me location. Lo first of all, location. Geography in terms of location. Where was it ancient Mes Mesopotamia located? Modern, Modern art. art. Yeah, but where, 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 where? The Middle East. Right. The Middle East, right? Good. Names. What was it called? Somebody just said one here. What was it called? <clears throat> the land, what? Between two rivers, what were the rivers? Uh, Tigris, Tigris and Euphrates. And Euphrates. Tigris and Euphrates. All right. What what was it called again? 
The fertile crescent. Fertile crescent. Good. What was it called again? <clears throat> what was it called again? The three names that are associated with Mesopotamia. <clears throat> the land between two rivers, the fertile crescent, what again? It's called the what? Cradle of what? Civilization. Civilization, right. Because the first, <clears throat> the first civilization was founded in Sumer. So good, that's established. So we talk about location. Let's talk about government. What type of government existed in Mesopotamia? It was based on what? A monarchy? Right, good, if you're reading, monarchy. So to have monarchs, you'll have what? They are kings. Name me some kings of Mesopotamia. Name me some kings. Some are some, Sargon. Sargon, right. Who else? The one that starts with an H. Um, what, is, what is the one that starts with an H? <laughs> um... Harambi, oh, no, Chad, that's not it. I think it's the gorilla. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. Harambe? Oh. It's weird. I just thought he was the one that had the laws. Harambi. Haram. Harambe. Hamaruba. Hamaruba. Okay, thank you. Hamarabi. Some people say Hamaruba or Hamarabi. Right? And there was another one. There's a long name. King. Uh, you chat chat and easy yeah Nebu he was king of Babylon all right so government and we also had government what We also have government officials. Ah, I want to see if anybody know this. What are government officials called? One word. It starts with a B. Politicians. Hmm? Politicians. A priest. They were called bureaucrats. So in, in ancient Mesopotamia, you had different types of government officials. What were they doing? What were their jobs? What were their functions? Tax work, collection, what are they? Military, what are they? They were involved in education. Trade, religion, right? We can say foreign affairs. So, location, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> government, government officials. In Mesopotamia, there were laws. What were the name of the laws? What were the name of the laws? He had the Hammurabi. The Code of Hammurabi. 
Right. What was it based on? Um, your punishment is going to match your crime. Based on an eye for an eye. You were what? Civil and criminal codes. So we, we have established location, government, laws. Religion, what was the religion based on? Did they practice monotheism? Polytheism. Right. Poly well, we can make a statement. However, the Jews who were, who were, who were enslaved <clears throat> practice what? What did the Jews practice? Mono theism because they believed in what? One one. God which was <clears throat> Yahweh. So we have religion. Who was in charge of the religion? We have priests. And there was also priestess and priest, right? They worship what where did they worship? What was it called? Ziggurats. Ziggurats, good. Ziggurats. So we have established government, location, government, laws, religion. Let's look at writing and literature. What was their religion? What was their writing called? Cuneiform. Who administered cuneiform? Who was responsible for the cuneiform? Scribes. What what was the you what did they do with, with cuneiform? <laughs> they documented what? What did they document? They documented births, deaths. They took they documented the census, trade, history. Mm. What was the literature called? Literature. What was the literature called? The Epic of Gilgamesh. Right? That's the literature. So again, this is how you should be making your notes. You ready book, you ready PowerPoint, and this is how I'm going to make my notes to study. So in case Dr. Vincent bring the term Code of Hammurabi, because that, that is one of the um, terms in the book. If you bring, if Dr. Vincent brings, um, Zugarat, or if he brings Epic of Gilgamesh, I can write about that. If he brings cuneiform, oh, all right, so we have literature, let's look at social, 
order or social hierarchy. In a, all right, let's go from the from ascending order. Give me ascending order. We starting from the bottom to the top. Give me ascending order. Anyone? Ascending order. Precept at the top. Oh, slaves at the bottom. Slaves, all right. Okay, good. Who, who, who came next? Nobles. No, remember ascending order. Slaves, who you are next? Farmers, all right? Unskilled workers. Who will come after them? Who will come after the second group in ascending order? Slaves, farmers, and skill. Who will come after them? Government officials. Not yet. You can say merchants, right? Artisans, right? Who will come after them? Government officials. Military. Military. I command. And then, of course, we'll have what? We have the priests and, the, and there too. And then we have the royal what? Family, all right. So if, if somebody gave you a if you get a, a task in ascending order, put these things in ascending order, or they can say descending is starting from top to bottom. If you want to, again, if you want to research this thing, remember what I told you to go. You can look at the social See, this is how it look here. You see? This is ascending order. And you go up. So in this, this is ascending, this is descending. Again, so you have some information on this page here. You can look at this. If you want, you can take a picture of this. You can write it down. The king and the royal family, government official with scribes, merchants. Artisan, so there were different ones, and so I found another one. Look at here. You had the royal family, high priests and nobles, officials, scribes, craftsmen, servants, and at the bottom here, we can add another layer slaves, right? And this is another one here. This is another. Right, you see the king, priests, scribes, merchants, commoners, slaves. If you want to draw it like this, you can do it like this. Or you can draw it as a pyramid. This is uh, ancient medieval history, the Mesopotamian upper class. You have a whole set of reading here, right? Because this is this is good to, because it is cited, right? So you can read about it. So all 
All right, so we have social order. Let's go to gender relations. What was this? What was it? The, how was this society structure? It was based on what? <clears throat> it was based on what? Men in power. Uh, what was it? Uh, men in power. Give me one term that describes that. It was based on what? Atriarchal. Atriarchal. Um, based on, right, but the word is pay. Patriarchy or patriarchal. It was a patriarchal society. What does that mean? It was male what? Right? Meaning that men had more power. So, women were ascribed certain roles and functions. Let's see how that. Let's see how that plays out. In, in terms of research. Remember in one of the PowerPoints, we saw this, this in one of the PowerPoints, right? So in ancient Mesopotamia, the rule was wife, mother and housekeeper. Girls did not attend school unless they were, they were from the royal family. Girls stayed home and learned the household tasks they would be for, perform when they grew up and married. But look at this, in religion, you see the difference here? In religion, they practice, it was equality because they had gods and what? Goddesses. And in ancient Mesopotamia, families sold their daughters into prostitution or slavery. In other words, in part of the religion in temples, they, they had what we call religious prostitutes. And so here women are being paraded. They are sold off to the highest bidders of men who will marry them off as young girls. So, I mean, if you want to get information, you can go to those sites. So we're looking at gender relations. What else we have? So we have look geography, government, laws, religion, writing and literature, social order, gender relations. We could talk about three. <clears throat> What did what did they who did what did they trade and who did it trade with? So the ancient Mesopotamians traded with Persia. They traded with Egypt. They traded with India and other parts. Of, of the Middle East. When we look at the ancient Mesopotamia, we can look at ethnic groups. Tell 
Tell me, <clears throat> tell me some of the ethnic groups in ancient Mesopotamia. The floor is open to tell me what. Oh. Assyrian. <clears throat> hmm? Assyrian. Assyrians, who else? Babylonians. Sumerians. Babylonians. Who else? Sumerians. Persians. Hold on. Sumerians. Persians, who else? Uh, Hittites. Hittites. Hittites, my bad. Hittites, who else? Akkadians. Akkadians, good. Who else? And you had, of course, the Hebrews, right? Who came there as slaves. So ethnic groups, Assyrians, Babylonians, Sumerian, Persians, Hittites, Akkadians, Hebrews. And we can look at what was their contribution. Contribution to global global history. What was it? What did they contribute to global history? What did they contribute? What is their contribution to the world? The wheel. The wheel. Or what else? The wheel. What else? Astronomy, astrology, what else? Mathematics. They gave us libraries. One of the biggest libraries was in Nineveh. Right? <clears throat> when we look at astrology and as the three wise men came out from that from this region here. The three wise men. Abraham also came out. All right. Abraham also came out of one of the cities called Earth. From the land Abraham, if you read the book of Genesis, Abraham came out from the land of Earth. So, in a nutshell, this is how quickly you can revise after you have read a, the book chapter. What you know to, to know that you know something. If you're doing a, if let's say you're doing a, you're working in a group, to know that you know something. Close the book and make and and do, do something like this and make the wrong and, and document. And so you'll know what you know and what you need to learn. So this is easier. I will have this as a student. So when I'm when I'm when I am, let's say this is a regular class and this is not an online class, and we have to do more assignments or more um more writing for, for finals and midterms, etc. This is how I will organize my notes. So if the, if the professor asks me to compare and contrast ancient Mesopotamia with ancient Egypt, I know, I know it already because I have done my, you see what I've done? I've organized my stuff.
And then if I want to know more information, I will go here. And you remember I told you where to look for, go to this website here. This is the website I want you all to go to, www.ancient.eu. And whatever country or civilization will come up. And when you click here, wow, look at this. Ancient Mesopotamia. And it's giving you all the, you see, cradle of civilization. religion in more detail. Uh, we have something here. You see, they're giving you more literature, right? This one is not in the book, the myth of Adapa. Jobs in terms of, you see, women. Buildings and government. And it gives you some history. Look at Zugarat. So you can go, in addition to the book, you come here and, and you read, you read upon this. If you want, all you have to do, boom. If I were you, I will do this. I will copy this and turn it into a Word document, and I will have it. And let's put, that's what, um, the, at the end, you put, the web, you put the website, so you know where they got it from. Because in this chapter here, uh, All right, so what are, the, what are some of the terms coming out from Mesopotamia in this chapter here? What are some of the terms from the book? Uniform. All right, some of the terms in the book will be terms, one of the polytheism. That's one. Another well, another term uniform. Another term epic. Term. So these are the terms in the chapter that are specific to ancient Mesopotamia. So how would you define, remember it's a take home exam. So if I gave you polytheism, I don't want three lines, but you have to relate polytheism back to ancient Mesopotamia. So let's see how that operates.
So we want to find out how polytheism is practiced or was practiced in ancient Mesopotamia. Again, you come back to this one, Mesopotamian religion. You come here again, and it, look at it, it's here. Everything is here. So you can come back here and do your research. You don't have to go into every detail, but give me some details, right? And then when you finish, define it. This is how you document it. You put your source. So let's say, all right, you're doing. Polytheism. I'm just typing. Uh, let's say I, I have an entire paragraph here. At the end, what I will do, I'll come here and put source. www.inchant.eu slash poly the is um slash religion slash ancient meso. Whatever the website tells you, follow that, how it is documented. So <clears throat> when I see this, I know that you have done your research. Now, if you type something, a whole paragraph, and it gave me no documentation. What, what do we call that? What is it called? Plagiarism. Plagiarism, great. Would you get with Dr. Vincent give you points? Hmm? Would you get points for it? No. No, I'll, I'll put zero. You might argue, you might want to go to Peter grade, but I have documentation because when I gave you your assignment, I will specifically say on the sheet, all terms must be documented. And that is my instruction. Will be my I will give you instructions. I'll, in fact, these are, these are some, I'll, I'll tell you up front now, but I'll write it on the paper. One, the paper must have a cover one page. I gave you a sample of the cover page of C syllabus. C the syllabus in terms of your cover page. They must have a cover page. Right? You type your you're, you're typing 12 font. Times New Romans. That's the font. Not 11.5, not Calibri, but Times Romans. Uh, and you also type in the double, single space, double space. 
and then after each term you will you will well, so skip a line skip a line meaning make your terms make you work neat don't jumble it up and then So after each term, you will document your sources as I showed you just there. So this, when I'm, when I'm giving you the questions, these are the instructions will be given. And then I will say, paper is due on March, when it is, 25th. March, yeah, March the 25th is a Friday. Let me see. Let me check my diary. So your paper will be due on March 25th. Are there anyone live on anyone in the class living on campus? Yes. How many of you? Um, all, right. Yeah. all right, so for those who live on campus, I will have a box at my door and you'll put your, you'll put your work in the box, right? I put the sign and you'll put your work there at this time because I'll be on campus and if it is not there at this time, I will remove the box and once I remove the box, I, I don't be on campus, so if you put it under my door, have luck. Those who are at home, you will email me. Your, the email will tell me what time it came in. It must be in my tutorial. If it comes in at 4 p.m., you will lose you will lose points. But I'll get we'll talk about this as we go along. So for so for now, these are some of the instructions. The instructions will be spelled out to you on the assignment. All right, so let's go again. So we have come, we have revised a interpretation. Let's revise ancient Ancient Egypt. All right, who wants to take a full shot? In terms of geography, who wants to go? Kali Kenny, tell me location. I'm going to call me. Come on. Miss Adriana Pierce. <clears throat> Are you in the class? Location of ancient Egypt. Miss Pierce. Northern Africa. All right. So we say it is in North 
Africa. Great. What else? Um, Elise Jackson, tell me about rivers. What, what are the rivers in it? What is the name of the river in ancient Egypt? Um, the Nile River. All right, the Nile River. Great, Nile River. With uh, two branches, two the white branch. and the blue. Two branches, good. You are reading, good. White, Nile, and the Blue Nile. And then this question is open to anyone in the class. Um, what, where's the source of the Nile? Source of the Nile. Lake Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. Right, so the source, right. That is in central Central Africa. Great. Ah, let me see if anybody read it. What is the um what is Egypt called? What's that name for Egypt? Does it start with a K like it is called the gift oh. of the yeah. Let, let's prove that. Let's prove it and see. Let's go to the uh, evidence. And we always go to the evidence. What's the evidence? The evidence is the historical record, right? So we can say we can put here. See, gift of the Nile. The Greek historian called Egypt the gift of the Nile. The gift of the Nile. So the Nile was used, the, right? We know that the Nile, the Nile flowed through the entire of Egypt. And if you want to see how long the Nile is, blah, blah, blah. All right. The established location. Government. What we had in ancient Egypt. What were they called? The pharaohs. All right, pharaohs. Name me some pharaohs names. Top. Oh, we took on Carmen. Who else? Uh, were they female pharaohs? Yes. Nefertiti. Who else? Cleopatra. Who else? Had sharp support. They, they, they were female pharaohs. So, government. In ancient Egypt, the pharaoh was a, a king, was seen as a king, a priest, and a god. That is how they liken themselves, king, priest, and god. Or king, priest, and goddess if it's, if it's a woman. And like 
ancient Mesopotamia, there were government officials. And the main government official was called a what? A vizier. Again, if you want to know if that is true, let's go to the tape. Let's go to the evidence. Viziers in ancient Egypt. Who the vizier? Again, we go to the ancient EU website. This is a vizier. The vizier was the most powerful position after the Pharaoh. And these were his functions. He was responsible for these government agencies. So if you have to the, tell me who's a vizier, you have to tell me, define it, and tell me, you have to document, tell me about these things. All right, the vizier. So you can read, you can read this the, and, and make your notes on the vizier if it comes on. Because what I can do too, I can bring some terms which are not in the book, but which we also study. But I want you to, to do your readings, right? So you can go here and make your notes and document. So the vizier, you can say the most important government official, the vizier. What else we did? All right, so we have government, and you can talk about the functions. What are the functions of the vizier, right? And they also had governors who were responsible for each region of Egypt. So government and we come to laws, law. What is the law in Egypt called? Let's check it out. Again, you go to ancient EU, and this is it here, Mahat. The law was based on the central cultural va value of Mahat. And it goes down and tells you everything about the law. Administration of law, codes, crime and punishment. Right? So you can read this website, read this, and you know about the law, ancient right, the law, Mahat. So ancient Egypt, what else we have? So what was the next thing we did? So we have laws. Religion. Right? They practice what? Polytheism. At one point, we can say at one point, in their history, under Akhenaten, they practice monotheism because Akhenaten, he saw himself as the son, the god of his son. And also there in the practice, you had the Hebrews who were slaves in ancient Egypt, they practiced monotheism. 
But by and large, the ancient Egyptians were polytheistic and they had many gods and goddesses. They created temples, priests. They had a priest. They had a. Uh, they believed in the afterlife. They wrote a book on the dead. So that's ancient Egyptians. What in terms of the writing? Somebody tell me what it does. Writing. Come on. Writing. What was it called? Hieroglyphics. Who who administered it? Scribes. What did they do? They documented the history, trade, they used it for census, etc. So scribes. What else do we have? Writing. And we can put your literature. They had a book of the dead. What else? So that's literature. Social order. How, what was the social order like? And then we can check it out. Social order. In ancient Egypt, So this is what it looked like. The Pharaoh, the government officials, yes, hmm? soldiers, scribes, merchants, craftsmen, farmers, and below here you will have slaves. So you can check it out. You see, this is a this is descending order. And this will be a sermon. And if you come here and you do this, you see different structures. You have several shapes of the pyramid, how it looks like. Gender relations. What does that look like? Again, it was based on what? It was based on what? Was it a matriarch society or patriarchal society? It was based on patriarchal society. Again, male, 
dominated. Those male dominated. But the difference is that some women became what? Fills. This did not happen in Mesopotamia. And that's a big difference if it if it compare and contrast in the both civilization. We know we had Cleopatra had to put, right? Nefertiti. And if you want again, if you want to know about that, you go and do your research. Gender roles in ancient Egypt. You come back to this website, like all this, everything is here for you. Women, all right? Women and religion, Occup occupations of women, love, sex, and marriage. Queen, Egyptian queens, and the lost gifts of right, all these things are there for you. Do we have gender? Ancient Egyptians, they traded where? They traded with the Greeks. Because they, were, they could have gone to the Mediterranean world. They traded with Mesopotamia and India and parts of the Middle East. Parts of West West Africa and we could put here and Central Africa. What was your contributions? to global history. What did they contribute? The pyramids, what else?
So these are some of their contributions. So when we look at both civilizations, we could compare and contrast. Let's see the last one, ancient India. Because after today, I'm not going back to this. We are moving forward. One, next Tuesday, we are going into China. So I expect you to know these three chapters. These two, well, chapter two and three. So ancient India, Location, where's India located? Location. Anyone? Location, where's ancient India? You can say anywhere. It's, it's in Asia, right? India's India's called what? Subcontinent. Like those Egypt and Mesopotamia rivers. What are the rivers? The Indus River and the Ganges. What are the two civilizations there? Sarapa and Mohenjo Daro. And we learned about these two civilizations on Tuesday. They were a brick civilization, brick, they were walled cities, they had what? Sewers, public baths. And what happened after that in ancient India, there was an invasion. Who invaded India? The Iranians. And when they invaded, they organized themselves. They organized into tribes. Over time, two empires, two dynasties emerged. Who are those dynasties? Anyone could tell me? Don't fall asleep on me, please. Tell me. Who are, the, who are the dynasties? The Morayan and Gupta. Gupta. Right. So here now you'll have to tell me about the Morayan government. All right, and then you're telling tell me about 
who the gov who was in the government. They had a they, like they had a bureaucracy. They also had a centralized government. They had a spy network. They organized, right? They had their what? Laws or that laws, what was the laws based on? You can find out. Well, in, in your book, in the book, there's a law called the Code of Manu. And I think that is found on page. Look at some On page 70, you'll find the laws there. What was the religion? The practice what? Um, they worship the Buddha. Um, practice Buddhism, what else? Hinduism. And Right, the, the religion was poly right? Many gods and goddesses. What about writing? What was the writing called? Writing and literature. Well, what was it called? Because you're writing for the school Sanskrit. What was the literature called? What was the literature called? He does. And then there was who had poetry. Right. What was the social order based on? Social order. What was based on? Hmm? Tell me, social order. What system? It was called what? The cat system. Right. Cat system. Cat system. And in 
You have to tell me how it was organized in a Sunday in the, the Brahmins, the Shastrishas, who else? The Vaijas, the Sutras. All right, and then you have the, the untouchables. These are out, they were outcast. Right? The caste system was very rigid. They could not rid very rigid. Couldn't move up there. The mobility was not possible. So we shall order what else? What about gender relations? And uh, women were what? Subordinated. It was a patriarchal society. And if you want to know that, We can look at gender relations, gender roles in ancient India. And you have several sites you can go to. And this will tell you a lot of fam how it was organized in ancient India, men and women in, and relationship between members, family status in India, joint families. So, so you can read up on this here in ancient India. But I said this in there, but we want to go to ancient India. You could go to this website, sociology. And it, uh, they give you discussions. And the last thing we will do today, well, <clears throat> you will fill in the blanks. Trade, you know that they traded with Persia, Mesopotamia, Egypt, China. And the contributions. They give us what? Mathematics, medicine, astrology, astronomy, etc. So I have spent my time this afternoon taking you through a revision of chapters two and three. And I hope that you will use these. I hope you're making your notes. Sorry. I hope you're making your notes so you know what you're speaking about. And this is your, we'll talk about this again. I'll re-emphasize this at the end of the month. Between my exam, and I will re-emphasize this before the midterm exam. And we'll re-emphasize all the terms. Those are in the book and those that we think should be there. I'll give you a, and then I'll tell you how much to choose. All right, so let's take the roll and we can roll out of here.